Hello and welcome. In this extremely exciting video, we are going to use some data analysis methods to analyze the live cryptocurrency markets by screening which coins are moving over a given very short term look back period. By the way, you don't need a Binance account or anything. For instance, what you are seeing here are some selected coins relative price developments over the last 30 minutes. As you see, while the in quotation marks traditional coins so I'm referring to Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, are not really moving. There are some altcoins, trash coins, whatever you want to call them, which have some significant movements over the last 30 minutes. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can pull the data, do the right amendments to the pull data and analyze what's going on in the cryptocurrency market. Before we are getting started, thanks a lot to Coursera for sponsoring this video. Prepare for a new career in the high growth field of data analytics, no experience or degree required. Get professional training designed by Google and have the opportunity to connect with top employers with an average entry level salary of 47,600 euro for a junior data analyst in Germany, according to Glassdoor Data. The program has a 4.8 out of 5 star rating and over 1.7 million are already enrolled. Skills you will learn in specific are key analytical skills such as data cleaning and analysis and high in demand tools such as R programming, Tableau, spreadsheets and SQL. With that, aid your self-development or even choose a new career path for 2023. To boost your CV or your LinkedIn profile after finishing, you are getting a Google professional certificate which you then can share. So sign up to enroll for a seven day free trial of this program now with my link, which I would post below. All right, so let's get started. First of all, we need three libraries, Pandas, Python Binance and Daytime. I'm also instantiating the client here. Then I'm setting up quite a function on the first side, but this one is just doing some very simple things. I will go through them step by step. First of all, it only has two arguments. Symbol, that is the coin name, so the coin where you want to pull price data for, and start, that is the starting point in time where you want to pull data from. Now frame is just doing an API call to the Binance API and pulls K-line or candlestick data for that given symbol. Defines the interval as one minute, so you're getting one minute granular data, and pulls data from a certain starting point on, e.g. 15 minutes ago from now. With that API call, you would get a lot of unnecessary information. So I'm just indexing for the first five columns, as I know from reading the API docs, that the first five columns contain the information I need. The columns are currently integer named, so 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. So I'm renaming them to what exactly they are, namely time, open, high, low, close. Then I'm setting the index of that data frame to the time column. As the timestamp currently is in Unix format, I'm converting that to a human readable timestamp here. As all values are currently text formatted, I'm doing a typecast to floating values here. So I'm converting the text values to floating values here. As for this analysis, I only need the close column. I'm just reassigning the data frame to only the close column of that data frame. So now I only have the close values of that data frame stored in frame. Finally, I'm naming the data frame as the given symbol name here. So I know later on which coin is behind the price time series. Before we are calling that function, so I can show you what we are getting, let's check out what we need for the arguments. So we need to provide a starting timestamp. As we want to go from exactly now to some minutes before, so x minutes before, we need to provide a now timestamp, but very important, 
this now timestamp has to be in the same time zone as the Binance servers. The Binance servers are in the UTC time zone, but I am not. So I need a function which is converting my time zone timestamp into a UTC time zone timestamp. For that, there is a very handy pandas function which is timestamp and then just UTC now. So let's execute that. So with that, I'm getting a UTC timestamp. As a comparison, if I just pull the now timestamp, I'm getting this timestamp. And as you see, it is two hours off as I'm not in the same time zone. So let's take that UTC timestamp, which is the correct one, and go 15 minutes back to get our starting point. For that, I'm just using the time delta function of daytime and provide 15 minutes here. So I'm passing the now timestamp and subtract 15 minutes. So if I'm executing that, you see, I'm just landing 15 minutes before exactly now. With that, we can call the get data function. So the function from above. So that's what I'm doing here. Then I'm providing Bitcoin to get Bitcoin price data. And now you have to transform this timestamp into a string. So I'm simply applying a string typecast on this timestamp. So this would look like this one here. And this one I can pass to my function. So with that, if I'm executing that, I would get Bitcoin price data for the last 15 minutes, one minute granular until now. All right. Now let's set up a list of coins and we do basically the exact same procedure. So I just set up a list of some random coins here, some hyped coins and some standard coins. There's no magic behind that. It's nearly random. So some of them had some interesting price history. So this is the background of this list. Just an example. For all those coins, we need to do the exact same as before. So I'm setting up an empty list here, DFs for data frames. Then I'm pulling a now timestamp and pull a UTC timestamp. Define a look back in minutes as 30 here, just to keep it flexible. And then I'm uh, defining a back timestamp where I'm just subtracting the look back window from the now timestamp, here, right? So this would pull everything back 30 minutes. And then I'm simply looping over that list and call my get data function, provide the symbol, the back timestamp and append that to the list here. So if I'm executing that and I bring together all those data frames stored in that list. So this is currently looking like this. So I have uh, a bunch of data frames here. I'm just using the pandas concat function to bring them together on axis one. And with that, I'm getting my all data frame and that looks pretty lucid. So I have my asset names here, Ethereum, for instance, Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and all the other coins here. I got my time as the index and all those uh, prices here. All right. Next, I have to calculate the relative changes. So as you see, they're all on different scale levels here, right? Dogecoin 0.07 US dollar, Bitcoin uh, 29K something, 1.8K for ETH. So I have to calculate the relative changes to make those coins comparable, all right? So for that, I'm using pandas PCT change function. So with that, I would get relative changes simply like this. So for every row, I have relative changes and now I have to accumulate them. So for this video, I just assume you know how you are accumulating 
returns. If you don't, I will link a video where I'm explaining that in detail. So the cumulative return calculation is here. So I'm taking the uh, minute changes, add a one and then take the cumulative product. So with that, I'm getting the cumulative returns. So this last row will tell you the percentage amount the coin was rising or dropping. So for instance, this one would tell you whatever coin that is was rising by a ridiculous amount of 5.8% over the last 30 minutes. And that is YGG, whatever that is. So finally, I just want to plot that. And now you see that interesting chart over the last half an hour. So you see this one is popping off quite distinctly. So YGG, this API 3 USCT is also extremely volatile. So just think about it. So this is the development over the last 30 minutes, right? And we have movements somewhere north of 5%, but also somewhere south of 3% uh, or something, like minus 3% or something like that. So already super interesting, but there's a big downside here, obviously. This whole construct here is not scalable, right? The more coins you add to that list, so where's that list here? The slower this will get, right? Furthermore, you only cover those coins you provided here, right? So what would be way more interesting, but also way more dedicated, and I'm very open to cover that in a future video, is to screen the whole market. So you're using a live stream instead of, um, instead of a API historical data request to pull data, store it somewhere locally, e.g. in a SQL database, and analyze which coins are currently shooting or even crashing down. So yeah, obviously hit like, comment on the video and let's do that in an upcoming video. Will be super interesting. That said, thanks a lot for watching and I'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Cheers, bye, bye.